So with many high school seniors facing decision day for college on May 1st, it is important to determine which school is, is really a good financial fit for you and your family. According to Consumer Reports, 45% of people who left college with student debt say it was not worth the cost. But there are ways to pay for college without going broke. We promise, right? All right, so joining me now is Donna Rosado. She is the senior editor for Consumer Reports. Good morning, Donna. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. You know, I have to tell you, this can be really overwhelming for parents, particularly if you have more than one child, which is why you really have to kind of come up with a strategy that needs to really begin with figuring out exactly how much college is going to cost. Yes, this is one of the most important financial decisions you may make of your life. And it's important for parents often will take on some loans or they'll just, you know, need to shell out some money to help their kids. And if they have more than one kid, you can look at tens of thousands of dollars that you're taking on that could, you know, cost you take money out of your income or you have to really be careful if you're going to take on a lot of debt. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because as you're trying to add this up, my husband and I enrolled both of our children in the Florida prepay plan, you know, years ago. But now we have oh, friends who have yeah. children in college, and they're like, yeah, we did the prepaid plan also, but you have to remember all of the fees and all of the books. There might not necessarily be included, which is why I keep hearing this kind of net price for college. Is that right? That's right. Um, people get a lot, get really focused on the tuition, room and board, but that's certainly not the only thing. You have uh, to factor in things, other living expenses, food, groceries. How much is that meal plan going to cost? Where are they going to get their health insurance? Um, and there's a lot of hidden fees. You should really look closely at like the special charges. Um, all schools have them, and you really want to look at your total cost of attendance. And you'll see that when your uh, school offers you admission, they'll also give you a financial aid offer letter and you go through that down the list and you can see what your real total cost of attendance is and that's what you want to work with and your total cost of attendance is that number minus scholarships or grants that you may get that can help you defray the cost that's the free money yeah which we which we like we want that to be really high right that figure okay so now let's talk a little bit about financial aid packages also um i think that that um i remember when i was going through this process many years ago you know, there are some financial aid opportunities out there that you may not even realize you qualify for well right i think a lot of people just are not they say oh myself my family we're not going to qualify for financial aid so i'm not even going to file uh, you know i'm not going to even apply for it well here's the thing Everybody can qualify for financial aid. Everyone qualifies for a loan from the federal government. And those are very flexible, low interest rate loans. Now that's not the first thing you wanna do is borrow, but it's just a myth that not everybody qualifies. And the other thing is, it's not how much you make. There is no sort of income cap on how much you make before you can get some need-based aid. As you said, it depends on how many kids you have in college. It can depend on, you know, how close you may be to retirement and, you know, your parents and how much they can contribute. Um, so there are a lot of factors into it that you really need to take into mind that will actually fit you so you can figure out what your true cost is. You know, I was reading some of the notes for our interview and another point that I know that is important is is how much debt can that student actually manage and it's interesting too because your suggestion is is that consider the debt and compare it to what that student expects to make in their first years after graduating co graduating college and make sure that those numbers jive yeah that's a really good rule of thumb and so simply you know think about how much you might make in those you know early years the average salary for a graduate today is about fifty thousand dollars and if you think that you're going to i mean that's that's a pretty big number but if you take on fifty thousand dollars worth of debt even that rule of thumb don't take on more than that you're looking at a payment that's five fifty almost six hundred dollars a month if you're not making a lot of money do you really want to have that kind of bill on your on, on, you know, in your living expenses. You know, in our Consumer Reports survey, we also found that people have so much student debt when they graduate, about 70% of people take on some kind of debt, but people are delaying buying homes, getting married, even sometimes their daily living expenses because they have such big debt. So you don't want to use that rule of thumb to figure out how much is going to be good for you. Yeah, it's an excellent point, too, particularly if you decide to become a lawyer and go to law school, which is also extremely expensive, yeah. and a lot of lawyers don't make a whole lot of money those first couple of years. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Do appreciate it from Consumer Reports, Donna Rosado. Have a good day.